Hi and welcome to the Geek Legion of Doom. This is a fantasy movie review and I'll be having a look at the movie Archer and the Sorceress, also known as Archer, Fugitive of the Empire. So this is a kind of 80s fantasy slash sword and sorcery movie. Now basically the story here is essentially there's kind of this warring amount of tribes in this kind of fantasy land and uh, this sort of one king, this one sort of like tribal leader has kind of managed to sort of get an alliance between all of these sort of different warring uh, clans to sort of try and sort of unite against this sort of common evil enemy who is this kind of, um, this empire ultimately, who are kind of, have all these sort of snake men as their sort of, uh, sort of soldiers, so to speak. And the, uh, the kind of, the king has this son called Torin, who is basically the hero of the film. And... Uh, there's kind of a, a, a plot ultimately to try and infiltrate the uh, the kind of uh, the the good guys camp and ultimately kill the king and frame the son, which happens, and then uh, the son basically has to try get get his revenge ultimately on these kind of uh, these bad guys and sort of get revenge for his father and defeat the bad guys by trying to find this kind of wizard and along the way he sort of picks up this sort of uh, this sorceress who's kind of has her own reasons for trying to find this wizard. And this kind of like gambler bloke who sort of ends up sort of going along for the ride as well. So these sort of three heroes are sort of travelling across this land, pursued by the Dark One, who is a kind of almost like a Darth Vader-like knight, and his kind of army of snake men. It meant actually be to be the first instalment of a series of movies, but it never actually got any further than just this one movie. So it kind of ends on a bit of a cliffhanger, to be honest, and nothing's really resolved. So, you know, you have to kind of bear that in mind when you're watching it. I guess it has an end to this sort of chapter, so to speak, but it really is, is meant to be an ongoing sort of story. So don't be expecting any kind of resolution, really, if you kind of are going to be watching this movie. So what's it really like? This is not one of my sort of favourite fancy films, I have to say. I mean, I've kind of watched a lot of these sort of 80s movies and I always thought this was a weak one. Now, here in the UK, as I said, it was kind of packaged as the Archer and the Sorcerer as a sort of standalone movie. Now, one of the key things that you'll notice with this movie is it has a really weird sort of psychedelic look. And they, they kind of all use a lot of these sort of video effects and kind of making sort of the, you know, colours kind of go weird on screen and has, has this sort of very sort of like weird crappy sort of synth music which is very very distracting so it's, it's a fairly sort of psychedelic movie in, in a lot of ways and a lot of a lot of these times you'll have these just very sort of strange colour filters there with this on the picture and things like that and these sort of zooms what you get in these sort of 70s films and stuff like that so what I mean what's good about it I guess there's a couple of a couple of things uh, I think the snake men which are the kind of the foot soldiers of the get of the bad guy actually look pretty good. They use sort of all obviously even for the time. I mean, I actually think the I think the effects even now of the Snake Men look pretty good. They are, they could have some do some decent sort of makeup and you know I think they look fairly good. And actually and I quite like the kind of the the bow. So the archer Torin basically has this kind of magical bow, uh, which is basically when he sort of fires arrows, it almost is almost like a grenade launcher. And it kind of reminds me if you've ever played things like sort of Skyrim when you kind of get an enchanted bow and it's got like, you know, these sort of fire arrows and stuff like that. It kind of reminds me of that. So I kind of quite like like it for that. And I also thought the kind of the gambler guy who they, they kind of meet along the way and, and ultimately sort of becomes one of the allies is quite a fun character as well. But to be quite honest, there's a lot that's wrong with this movie. It's, it's not a particularly interesting film to watch in regards to... Um, any excitement it's kind of it's, it's a bit of a slow slow movie because half of it well the, the first half really is pretty much set up and i had a look at the the, uh, the timestamp when pretty much the kind of main adventure sort of got started and it was around 35 minutes uh, and the, the first 35 minutes is really just the kind of um the setup to sort of tell you what's happening i think because they've got george kennedy who plays torin's father uh who gets murdered sort of fairly sort of in, well fairly early on it just just to give him a bit of screen time is they have this really long sort of half an hour sort of section at the beginning which is what just goes on way too long and it kind of makes it not a particularly interesting film Torin, uh, who is the kind of the main hero is really bland he just is is not an interesting character he has no uh d d defining characteristics he's just the hero because this film needs a hero and you know i guess he's going to be this sort of good looking athletic guy but he hasn't he hasn't got any actual 
sort of characterization or sort of uh, personality, so to speak. And he's so he has this kind of relationship with this sort of sorceress who who has this sort of her own reasons, but I don't think they're particularly well defined. She's sort of after this sorceress, and you kind of we get some idea that there's obviously some sort of history between their two, two families, but it's not massively well sort of uh, defined. I don't think so. It's kind of I guess that this was meant to be actually sort of go on in this film series would more would be revealed, you know. So it's. All they go really the story is they go from these kind of he goes on the run and goes to this town and that's pretty much the story and you know in a nutshell so it's it almost seems like they, they kind of just wasted too much time on the setup and when the actual plot of the actual movie got going because they were intending to do it as a sort of a series of films they just thought wow this is just kind of like the first the first trial so there's really not a lot to it so this is definitely one of the kind of the lesser films of, of the kind of the 80s sort of sword and sorcery sort of phenomenon that we had. I know there are some fans of this movie and that's great if you like it, but I actually thought this was a below average movie even for kind of, you know, the, the 80s sort of sword and sorcery. The choreography is awful as well, I have to say. So whenever you have a look at these the fight scenes, just have a look at the choreography. It looks terrible. It really does. And, you know, there's a lot of sort of like, slow-mo and but this is old school slow-mo and uh you know things like that it just doesn't look very good none of the fights look authentic you know i'm not expecting um fine you know superb cinema from an 80s schlocky fancy movie but nevertheless you, you know you've got certainly films that can do it better than this that have done it on a, on a probably lower budget so you know i i personally think this is one of the sort of the the lesser examples of these of of that particular subgenre. So I'm going to give this one a four out of ten. Uh, what have, what do you think about it? Leave me a comment. I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.